All right, we are trying something different today. I have a GoPro Hero 7 black on my forehead with the head strap and we're gonna do a POV build. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too, uh, I don't know, nausea inducing for you guys. If it is, let me know in the comments. I don't expect everyone will like this style, but uh, I, I do think it's a unique perspective. Uh, and if you guys appreciate that and can get over the nausea factor, then uh, also be sure to let me know in the comments. This is just a kind of an experimental thing. And I figured you've seen so many conventional builds with conventional cameras that this would be, again, a unique perspective. Uh, so we're gonna be building a used PC. Uh, and that means that every one of these parts is used uh, with the exception of this power supply and this SSD here. This is an 860 Evo 500 gig drive. And uh, the reason why I don't recommend going with a used drive is because you don't know what the heck was on this drive prior to you owning it. Uh, and then also with power supplies, you don't know how strained these units were in previous systems. I mean, they, you could have had a guy with two Radon 7s and a 7900X using you know this power supply will put that under heavy strain and it might reduce the uh, lifespan of that unit so and most of these are pretty cheap anyway like the discounts for a used power supply are pretty small same with most drives so i recommend just buying new the other stuff though a 1080 ti this is used uh, we also have a uh, captain 360 ex aio it's a white one we have a b350 tomahawk arctic motherboard from msi and this is obviously used it's an older chipset uh, we're using a 2600 from amd and uh i took the chip pretty sure i took the chip out maybe i didn't i had this all <clears throat> tested first just to make sure but i'll go ahead and take that back out so you guys get that sweet b-roll actually we won't even have b-roll in this video it'll all be pr technically primary roll this is going to be an interesting video for sure but uh, hopefully you guys appreciate it and then we have two uh these are eight gig sticks a piece of trident z ddr4 they run at 3200 megahertz obviously for ryzen faster memory is better with tighter timings these will be good enough for our system, and we're gonna throw it all into a Be Quiet Pure Base 500 white, which you guys just saw us review in a previous video. So, without further ado, let's get to assembling. Meet Deepcool's Castle 240 EX all-in-one liquid cooler sporting a beautiful yet functional design. Fans are optimized for silent operation and static pressure. The new dual chamber three-phase pump ensures strength and reliability. The block's RGB is diffused better than ever. And the logo cap is now removable, customizable, and rotatable. This is honestly my favorite part. And it's all packaged with Deepcool's patented anti-leak tech, which we got to see live in action at Computex 2019. Check out the video description for more details. By the way, if you're wondering um, why I have my phone here, I'm actually viewing, this is like gonna be an inception moment right here. We're looking into multiple phones. Uh, I'm, I'm making sure that all the stuff I wanna show you guys is in shot. Uh, this is why I had the CPU installed beforehand when we were filming this because I actually put all this together, tested everything out and realized that half the stuff I was doing wasn't in frame. That's a big no-no, that would defeat the purpose of the video. So I wanna make sure that I have it all centered this time. I'm trying to be good about not moving my head too much. I think I will get better with time. So if you guys are patient with me in this first video here, um, I promise it'll get better. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. We're gonna work off of the motherboard box. It's a cheap makeshift test bench, if you will. And uh, we're gonna grab that CPU. This is a Ryzen 5 2600. You can buy these new, believe it or not, for around 120 bucks. So if you want, uh, you know, if you want to buy new, then this would be a really good option. Obviously, it's not going to have the highest IPC. This is a generation old at this point from AMD. Looks like I got some fingerprint smudges there. That'd be okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and install this. Uh, you can buy these used for about 100 bucks on eBay or 120 new. So uh, either way you'll be fine. Uh, CPUs don't typically die. eBay buyer protection guarantee usually has you covered anyway, which is why I recommend buying on eBay or buying online and meeting the person someplace public where you can test the components. Let's see, install the first module there and second module. There we go. Okay. And it's pretty much it for our system. I do have the AIO uh, mount points here already pre-installed. It's gonna be super straightforward to uh, get that CP block secured. Also, we need to tackle this rear IO shield. You guys are gonna get to see firsthand 
how difficult this is for someone who's been uh, doing this for a while. It does not matter how many times you do this, it's always a pain in the butt. Actually, that one was pretty easy. I've seen much worse. I've seen, yeah, seen much worse. Also, I realized that that was barely in the shot. I apologize. Again, I'm trying to improve with time here. Uh, let's go ahead and install the motherboard now. So I'll get low. Bring it in like so. And where's that one standoff? There it is. Okay. All right, looking good. Let's get this screwed in. Can you, can you not, please? Can you not? I'm trying to work here, can you not? Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, with the motherboard secured, let's go ahead and get the HD audio, uh, front power, and USB 3 connected. Go ahead and pre-route these. So USB 3 is gonna go somewhere through there. This is HD audio, through the bottom right. And then we have a power switch and I believe this is power LED. Going uh, somewhere, yep, somewhere under there. So HD audio, always easy. I recommend doing these first, especially before you install your power supply because the power supply cables are pretty fat and uh, can make things difficult uh, to access especially these smaller cables. So negative is on the right. Whoops. There we go, positive on the left. Tuck that in. And what I really like about this board, we've got a 90 degree USB 3 connector. So just a more clean look, although it is uh, a bit more difficult to install. Actually here, what we can do this is a cool feature of the PureBase 500. We can remove this thumb screw and the entire bracket just falls out. Check that out. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see I've already shifted the hard drive cage a bit further toward the back. I'm gonna have the AIO, or sorry, the, the rad section of the AIO. It's gonna sit like that and then we're gonna put the fans on this side. Not as ideal because again, we've gotta have that air turn 90 degrees uh, from the side vents. You can see on the front panel here. Uh, so air is gonna to have to come in from the side and then turn left. And if you have fans closer to this apex here, then they're gonna run less efficient. But um, I, I think this will still be okay. We've got enough rad space in here that uh, heat really shouldn't be a problem. I mean, this is like a 65 watt chip, so. I think, I think we're in the clear. And as for fans, not really gonna matter which fans we use. I think I have the, yep, I still have the original Gamer Storm fans. So we'll use these just to stick with the uh, white theme we've got going on here. Ooh, I'm also gonna take this fan here. This is actually a Fractal Design fan, but uh, it's just plain white with a black frame. I think that'll go very nicely right here. And uh, we're also, yeah, we're not gonna use much RGB at all. Like there is some RGB in the block. There's a blue logo over the Gigabyte uh, naming. And then there's also, I think, a few white LEDs on the board. Not too sure. Uh, there might be some under the chipset heatsink, but uh, it's gonna be a pretty monochromatic build and I don't want too much RGB interfering with that. If you guys haven't realized, this is kind of like a Walter White rebirth, only this time with used components. Okay, one last screw here. We've got the fan cables running through these right cutouts here in the chassis. I think we're gonna use a fan hub just to keep the uh, cabling to a minimum. I'm not sure how many fan hubs we have on the, or well, little fan ports we have on the uh, motherboard. So I think a hub will come in handy. So yeah, this is what we've got going on through the front. And when we put the panel back on, you're not even gonna know they're there. Nice. I think we're gonna have the AIO tubes run this way. I wanted to have them run from the top because we're not gonna put fans at the top of the case, but uh, you can see the tubes are too long and I can't really get this to crunch up there. And uh, because we're gonna have the graphics card turned vertical, it's gonna cover up these tubes anyway. So I think this will look uh, just fine like this right here. Some good old thermal grizzly paste. I'm not gonna go too crazy with the application method, just a straight line. There are better ways to do this, but 
They're only gonna slightly improve temps, if at all. And we're gonna run the AIO like so. Make sure the screws align. Looks great. Let's have these cables run through the cutout up top. I'll deal with those later. But uh, yeah, this is looking nice and clean. What do you guys think so far? I'm gonna go ahead and install this rear 140 mil fan next, just so we can finish running these smaller cables before we install that power supply. And it will look kind of like that in the build. Uh, black frame, that's okay though. We do have a uh, black tubing here to offset that. We also have uh, a black mesh panel installed up top. We could swap this for the closed off panel, but it, uh, I prefer better airflow. So that's why we're sticking with this setup here. Next up is the power supply. Of course, I recommend, like I said earlier, buying a new power supply just to be on the safe side. It's one of those things you really don't want to mess around with. Uh, this unit here costs around 60 bucks. You could certainly get cheaper units. I have cheaper units in the closet. Uh, not worried so much about saving the, you know, every last dollar possible. I just uh, want something that's reliable, pretty quiet, and the Pure Power 11 does that for us. All right, let's get this through here. Oh, I'll flip this over, even though we do have ventilation through the basement. I'm gonna make use of that dust filter at the bottom of the case. Now it's nice that these cables are blacked out, but I think white would look better. I do have an older pair of custom sleeve cables from Virility PC Customs, my good friend Tony, and uh, we're gonna use those for this build. I have a special case for them. Oh, look at those. So we have, I have the other PCI cable in the closet, but uh, 8-pin EPS, PCI power, and the 24-pin, awesome. 8-pin EPS installed, and we're gonna go ahead and get these in there. Okay. We'll deal with the cable management a bit later. I want to make sure we can get everything installed first. Now the next thing to handle, we have the Cable Mod Vertical Riser Kit. I've already pre-assembled it. I've got the PCIe riser attached to it. And all you need to do, is just slot the graphics card like so, just like you would with a regular motherboard. So it's gonna fit snug in there. Whoops, forgot to pull back the retention arm. That'd probably be helpful. All right, lock the retention arm back in place. And then we can use two, I think these are M3 screws, to keep the card stable in the kit. I do recommend connecting the um, right angle display port through the back first because that's gonna be a pain to install once this card's in there, especially if your case does have these uh, little PCI bracket frames, whatever you wanna call them. I'm not gonna worry about that now. We're gonna connect the riser cable first. And we're gonna pull the rest of the card in after that. All right, riser cable secure. And we're tucking in the rest of the kit here. Here we go. So that is pretty much how the build's gonna look after we get the uh, supplemental power connected. Hey Pepsi, what you doing? What you doing, girl? And okay, let's install this again. And uh, that should clean up a lot of the cable mess here. We'll fix these combs. These these broke, it's just because they're plastic. But Pepsi, can you, can you not? Can you not? I think this is my work area. What are you doing? You can't lay there. I am not sure what this 24 pin is trying to do. I think it's contorting this way because there isn't much space between the uh, little bracket and the motherboard tray, so it feels kind of squished there. It doesn't look bad, it just looks a little weird. But it does clean up some space here, so we don't have both sets of cables touching. I think that's actually, it's actually all right. We do have a bit of interference here with the AIO tubes, but I think it still looks decent. It's more of a subjective thing, really. 
And uh, yeah, all right, so let's clean up the mess behind the motherboard tray and uh, we'll power it all on. And lastly here, the SSD install. Make sure that the ports are facing down. There we go. We have SATA power. Okay, and we're gonna power it on for the first time. Woo! That isn't the sound I wanted to hear. All right, let's see what's wrong. A fan is scraping something. I think it's the graphics card. Yup. Definitely the graphics card. Oh, that sounds so bad. What is it hitting? What is that? What is that hitting? Oh, uh, I see it. It's a cable that is falling through there. Let's push it up. There we go. We gotta let this AIO prime for a bit. It, uh, it has not been running for quite a while. We'll also change that color. I'm not a big fan of red in this build for obvious reasons. Uh, also, I'm sure you noticed the color clash here. We have orange on the graphics card and then we have like a light blue color on the VRM heat sinks. Um, you could just take like a, <laughs> if you wanted to do it really sketchy, you could just take a Sharpie and cover either of these accents up um, not really a big deal to me. They're very small accents. You have to really be looking for them to, to see them. Uh, once we get this color changed here, and uh, yeah. so the pump just finished priming. It's now very quiet. Uh, we'll fix the fan curves and install Windows 10, and we'll call it a video. And there we go, 3D Mark Time Spy score of 80, roughly 8,500. That's with, again, a Ryzen 5 2600 and a GTX 1080 Ti, both running at stock with 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz, uh, 16, 18, 18 timings, and uh, better than 75% of all results, which is pretty good. I wasn't going for the best score for the least amount of money spent. This is about a thousand bucks or so. You could certainly build a similar performing system for around the same price, kind of defeats the purpose of building use, but uh, I wanted to throw these parts together and see how they're holding up in late 2019, and this is a pretty darn good score. Of course, you could probably find better local deals if you're willing to do that. I had fun building this. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the POV style. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, and I will catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us. I really hope my thumbs are in the shot.